Um, this is my first time, um, well, at this event and actually other meetings. Um, so this poem is about, um, well, I know Roy said like we shouldn't be so hard on young people, but Roy doesn't have to talk to young people every single day. Everywhere. So this poem is about um, seeking authentic relationships um, in such a technological um, an alcohol-fueled environment. I'm a student at Western, in case you can't decipher that, so it goes. I'm done Facebook chatting. I'm done texting. I'm done adding these strangers whose eyes I forget. I'm done answering the question, do you come here often? Because the answer is inevitably yes. It's conversation inception with little to no conception of thought, of character of the things that make us who we are. Our quirks, what really grinds our gears, our moles, bad dreams, what beckons tears. Who taught you how to plant a tree and ride a bike and play hockey? I know there's more behind that plaid. I squint my eyes and sip. One Tuesday in 11th grade, I couldn't cease my mind, so I crouched by the couch and I shook my dad until he woke and his eyes were kind. And he watched me and he blinked and he asked me if I wanted pizza and I've never felt more safe. On nameless streets through wet windshields, we burned the tops of our mouths in an old van that smells like wet earth and stale Cheetos. Since then, I felt most alive, dwelling between the hours for transformation and those for transportation, too early for thought and too late for action, the hours after lovers silence their springs, but before streetlights turn off. In this time, in our time, we had nothing but time. It was quiet but for a far-off siren and the melodic hum of an engine. Can you hear it now? So that's one of the reasons I am who I am, and if I open my eyes and if you still stand where you stood when I started this tangential thought, then maybe you're deaf, but maybe you're not. Because I'm done being reduced to one letter, a U, like an empty, unlucky, confining horseshoe. Done being discovered by foreign rough hands that can't shape a three-letter word. Done watching men nod as if they understand and knowing I haven't been heard. Done with notifications, with liking and sharing, I'd like to share something with you. While some moms were breaking buying video games, my mom respected my mind. And she filled it with words and with stories and pictures, unbridled ideas and things undefined. So I learned to decipher this code we call life and to try to cup light in my palms. When I'd fail, thrash around in my one poster bed, you would hum and you'd stroke and you'd silence my qualms. I'd stumble to slumber under soap-scented hands and the steady vibrations of voice. Can you hear it now? That calming combo, the hum and hair stroke, surpasses your offer of a stiff rum and coke. Oh no, what has happened, it's plain to see that bleak eventuality. Now your eyes have gone misty, your jaw is unhinged, your mind is on YouTube to silence my whinge. I don't blame you, I'd rather watch cats play piano than listen to me babble too. I guess it's the bane of a thinker's existence to continually doubt their unwielding insistence that there's more. To open their mouth and unbuckle their heart to a constant resistance and an impenetrable door. It's dark out here, and I can feel your breath on the back of my neck, but I can't seem to reach out and touch you just yet. Because all of us stand out here huddled round fires, watching the others through fences of wire and pane glass windows that keep out the pain. We shuffle around, reaching out ink-stained fingers, faces bearing mad smiles that linger even when we trip. And a half-hummed hymn from the back of our throats cast out into the universe, daring to hope. Can you hear it now? Spinning, one for heavy petting. One to attack, one to get broken, one to hold up the truth, and one is a token. I wish I had eight hearts. I worry about the one. It has so much nervy neurotica, twisted erotica, and miles of minutiae to run.